This looks oddly familiar. It's on the tip of my tongue. Legend of Zelda. You're not, my fellow weebs, for your eyes are not deceiving you. And no, it's not a Final Fantasy mod. This is indeed a Sailor Moon RPG. An official Sailor Moon RPG that you might not have heard of because, like most early anime games, the Japanese hoarded it all to themselves. And I don't really blame them. Released exclusively for the Super Famicom, Sailor Moon Another Story is one of many many Sailor Moon games that we never got in the West, which financially made sense back in 1995 when us in the West were ignorant of anime's greatness. But you'd think we'd try to capitalize on it now, perhaps by putting it into some type of collection? I'm just saying, money. But among all these titles, another story stands out as the only RPG as well as a prime example of why this game will probably never see an international release. Mostly because... it's just... okay. Borderlining bad. And I suppose that this is as good a time as any to mention that I am playing an English ROM hack of the game, since I can't read Moonspeak. And if you've ever played an RPG before, you know, that kinda matters. And especially here, since the biggest draw of the game is easily the story. Sailor Moon fans may as well pour themselves a big old bowl of teeth rotting cereal and wrap themselves up in a nice warm blanket, because they will feel right at home with this one. This, this stuff is awful. Collectors should leave it in the box. Yeah. Well, this is of course assuming you've watched past the third season of the classic show. Which, FYI, this game is clearly based more on the show as opposed to the manga. How the characters talk and react are on point with their anime counterparts and is easily the most charming and enjoyable aspect of the game. Every scene they're in feels like it could have been taken right out of the show. The team at Angel, were clearly fans of the series, and they really managed to capture what it is that made the show so much fun to watch in the first place. Here's a great example. One of the first scenes of the game has Usagi rushing to the other scouts to warn them about the coming threat. The return of their fallen enemies. Something that could spell the end of the world as they know it. She ends up getting sidetracked by gossip about Ami's boyfriend. Oh, Usagi. Plus, major props for really understanding how to take advantage of the weird mechanics of the series. By downright abusing the rules of time travel, or more honestly, like rewriting them, they're able to tell a brand new tale that could have easily been woven into the show as a whole new arc and would fit in seamlessly. And for gameplay purposes, manages to give a solid story-driven reason to incorporate fights with a bunch of iconic big bads from the franchise without ever feeling contrived. Without spoiling too much, a big part of the new villain's plot involves reviving past foes, who just happen to remember what happened to them. Hmm. And I'd be remiss if I didn't point out this sweet moment with Chibi Moon and Queen Serenity that uh, just isn't explored enough. But other than that, the plot in Sailor Moon Another Story is honestly what Sailor Moon fans would expect, to the point of predictability actually. Both the strengths and weaknesses of the writing are all there in full force. Fun character moments, nonsensical time travel paradoxes, evil senshi counterparts, dumb moments where the characters just give up when they obviously shouldn't, and even some filler. Yeah, chapter 2 is totally filler. Though honestly, as enjoyable as all that is, and the story is hands down my favorite part of the game, 
I have to say, if you're not a Sailor Moon fan already, doubt the story is going to convert you. Though at first glance, you wouldn't expect that, because this is a great looking game. The sprite work here is fantastic and does a great job bringing out character personality. And the cool attack voiceovers? They don't hurt either. And the attention to detail and effort put into even the most unimportant areas shows genuine love for the work. I especially liked getting to explore the main city featured in the series. Though, I wish I could have loved it. For as much as there is to see, there's very little to do, especially early on. Sailor Moon Another Story is probably the most linear RPG I have ever played and offers little to no incentive for exploration. Here's what I mean. In the first chapter of the game, you visit the hospital. The character you're visiting is on the third floor, but you can actually explore all the floors and rooms in the building. But there's nothing in them. So what's the point? And I can make the same case for all the towns you visit too. Every home is accessible, and they all look unique and interesting. It's just a pity that there's no reason to go in any of them other than to waste your time. Even the NPCs feel pretty pointless offering next to nothing that you didn't already know or couldn't surmise. They might as all well just be this guy. And there's just very little here expanding the Sailor Moon universe outside of what the scouts are feeling themselves. And even when you get the obligatory airship that is definitely shoehorned in, Though, who doesn't love a little Mode 7? There's little else to explore outside of two extra bosses. And even most of the chests in the game are literally point blank in front of you on your path to the next area. If you've ever been in a situation in a game where you come to a fork in the road and you don't want the correct path to the next story beat because you know you want to explore and find some better loot, don't worry, it's not a problem here because there is no other path. Which for an RPG, is a no-no. And speaking of no-nos, the music. To be blunt, it ranges from passable with some okay 16-bit songs from the series to downright grating. The battle music is easily the worst of the group, with a section that gets way too loud. And there are a lot of fights in this game, so don't. I repeat, don't play this game with headphones in. Fair warning. And I should probably warn you about that other landmine too, the combat, which is easily the most frustrating aspect of the game, and what really makes it circle that dreaded bad game territory. But to really understand why, we're gonna have to break it down. If I didn't make it painfully obvious already, Sailor Moon Another Story uses a turn-based combat system that was clearly influenced by Final Fantasy with a few hints of Chrono Trigger in there, as seen in the team attacks. Except it's not nearly as refined as either of them. The game spans five chapters, and the first one sets up for what feels like a typical retro RPG experience. You get your first battle for getting your bearings just using Sailor Moon, which is a nice throwback to the first fight of the franchise by the way, so you know, some more points towards the story. And then it branches out into team combat, the bread and butter of the battles and everything is going pretty smoothly. A little too smoothly. Oh, then chapter two just hits like truck coon and the difficulty spikes. You're thrown into multiple scenarios early on that again, kind of feel like filler story-wise, so there go those extra points, where you have to control a single scout for long periods of time with the first one being the hardest, Sailor Mercury's chapter. Now, I already see this being a huge falling off point for inexperienced players, but what hurts it is twofold. First off, this is not the only time this happens in this game. The difficulty goes full on stocks chart, with just how often it spikes and dips as it's constantly shifting between bosses being fairly easy to just standard random battles being completely brutal, without any warning or reason. And the way around these is not exactly good or clear. And second, and this may seem stupidly obvious, especially coming from a scrub like me, but you know, hear me out. You have to understand the combat system, particularly formations. Now RPG veterans may be familiar with this, 
the idea being that you can have your characters in two rows. The front row, traditionally for attackers and tanks who will be doing and taking damage, and the back row for support and healers. Except Sailor Moon goes a bit overboard with this concept. Taking a quick look, we can see that there are multiple formations to choose from, each with three rows. Now the problem with this is just how much of a difference in damage your position will make. And I am not exaggerating here. In the final battle, my character in the farthest back row, with three attack buffs, was only doing an average of 15 damage, and was only taking about three. And for reference, this enemy has over 100,000 HP. Yeah, it definitely takes some experimentation to get used to, and failure to really grasp the nuances of the system is going to result in... Yeah. Especially in the Mercury chapter. And I could not bring this up because the game never really tells you about how important this system is. Especially since it doesn't amount to much in most other RPGs. I think the only time I've ever seen it make an impact was against this wall jerk in FF7. And it doubly doesn't help that you can't change formations mid-battle. So experimentation comes at the cost of failure. Of course, formation mastery won't help you much if you don't have the power and strategy to take advantage of it. And this is where Sailor Moon gets... complicated. Sailor Moon Another Story has 10 party members that you are constantly switching between throughout the entire game, which often results in you needing to formulate new strategies, which is a good thing. But failure to do so will make fights a genuine chore. And while I was successful in plowing through to the end of the game by winning just battles of attrition, I knew I was doing something wrong. That or the game's combat is just really bad. Turns out, it's a little bit of both. Glancing over a walkthrough from sites that must be as old as the game itself, these are the true passion project sites right here, people, I was able to see my mistakes. But the problem is... I had no idea what I was doing wrong other than that boss fights were just taking forever. And this is what I found. Apparently, certain characters are just more effective against certain enemies. Now I have no idea why this is, as there is no elemental system in this game, or damage inducing status effects that you can use, or honestly, very much beyond variations of healing or just varying levels of damaging attacks. So knowing which character to use in what formation almost feels like it's left up to chance. And the second issue I was having was that I was severely, severely underleveled. Which is absurd. This game has a bad case of random battle syndrome. I swear, I run into wild Pokemon in the grass less often than I do enemies in this game. And the thing is, the way I play RPGs, I tend to fight most of them, so that I'm at the right level for when I reach the boss. And yet, here I was, roughly 10 levels under what the walkthrough said I should be. At all times. And I can believe it too. Again, my battles were battles of attrition, more than anything else. So, hi-ho, hi-ho, a grinding I will go. Please kill me now, I don't want to go. Hi-ho, hi-ho, uh, yeah. This game gets very grindy. So, I just threw up some YouTube videos and got my grind on. That doesn't sound right. Also, quick warning for all of you looking to give this game a go. Some ROMs of the game are glitched to where occasionally random battles turn into slow motion. It really sucks, so watch out for that. And now, at this point, I'm sure that hardcore retro RPG fans are rolling their eyes or have already clicked off. Oh, what a baby! Can't handle a little grinding, wah, wah, wah. But here's the big thing about the grinding. There is no satisfaction to be had from leveling up. The game starts you off with every move you're gonna have, minus the scout combo attacks which you can just try out each combo in the menu screen right at the start to unlock all of them right away. So you basically have them all, so there's never anything really to look forward to other than a minuscule amount of extra damage. Combine that with a lack of really upgrading your arsenal, equipment drops are pretty much the same from start to finish, 
and it just makes the fighting feel really flat. None of the battles in this game, Final Fight included, ever really stood out, ever felt special. Not helped by the fact that they, and all of the common enemies, basically use the same attacks and animations throughout the entire game. And I personally never felt that powerful either, even when I was dominating. I just wasn't enjoying myself the way I have with other turn-based RPGs. Which really leaves me torn, because despite all that, I still kinda like this game. As a Sailor Moon fan, especially of the OG anime, the story hits all the right marks. It checks all the right boxes, and it looks nice too. But as a gamer, oh, this game is pretty bad. The music is tedious, the battles are a chore, and the RPG elements are super lacking. If you're a Sailor Moon fan, you're probably better off just watching a Let's Play. And everyone else, just pass this one by. Hey everyone, did you enjoy that video? You have fun? Of course you did. I'm still here after all. And you know what? The fun doesn't have to end here. I've got plenty of other great... ...ish... ...videos you can check out. Including a Sailor Moon beat-em-up. It's actually the one I was watching in this video. Meta, I know. So, go check those out and be sure to like, subscribe, social media, and all that other YouTube stuff so you can keep up with my latest videos. Spammer D says...